Waiting for this to come up. My name is Dave Carpenter. I'm a PA in the 5T South ICU. And uh, I'm going to talk about IL. I can jump on my time here. There we go. Okay, so um, I mean, this is actually a pretty easy topic. And uh, we started this. Um, one of our jobs in the ICU is we uh, do code uh, management um, in our respective areas. And mostly, it's already being run by the time we get there. So our job is kind of crowd control and access. And um, one of the things that, you know, was kind of, you know, right after we got this, we got the IO and I'm like, ah, power tools, human body, what's not to like there? Um, <laughs> so, um, but in my kind of epiphany, you know, I, I put some in, it worked okay. But uh, we had a code, this is back when we were in the tower, and I went up to the code and the patient's lying in bed crying. I'm like, okay, that's a little weird. And then I look over the bed and one of the residents is doing CPR on somebody on the floor. And one of the other residents is trying to pull his pants down and there's kind of a, somebody had opened up a central line kit and the contents were kind of scattered on the floor. So it would be kind of the definition of a dirty line there. Um, and basically I told him to get out of the way. I IO'd him. Um, somebody handed me an epi, we gave him an epi and we got ROSC. And I'm like, ah, drop the mic out. Um, <laughs> but you know, that was the thing is, you know, this is a guy that didn't have access and now all of a sudden did. And that's kind of the, the, you know, so if you're not using IO in your codes, you're almost certainly doing it wrong. Um, so I'm gonna talk about um, Easy IO, which is a product of Arrow. There's about three of them on the market. There's about another three that are non-powered. I used those when I was in the military as a medic. I would not advise that. I'm a pretty big, pretty strong guy, and it's not easy. Um, so I would get one of the powered ones, you know, like I said, we use the arrow, but I don't think there's any significant difference between them. Um, the, in adults, use the proximal humerus, the proximal tibia. People forget about the distal tibia. And then in kids, you can also use the distal femur. Um, contraindications are fracture of your target bone, um, an infection at the area, uh, inability to identify landmarks. Um, if somebody has done an IO in the previous 48 hours, or if they have a prosthesis or orthopedic uh, procedure near the insertion site. And we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, so there's three needle types. Generally, if you're dealing with adults, I would get the 15 millimeter out of your kit. Um, they're too small and they usually won't go all the way through the cortex. Um, the blue one or the 25 millimeter is what you should use for almost everyone except for your, you know, larger patients. You may end up using, needing to use the 45 millimeter. Um, now, as one of my colleagues told me, um, if you feel the needle go in, give, and then bite again, and then give again, and when you blow it up, the leg kind of blows up, you've probably gone through. And that's what I see a lot with the 45s, is people go through both cortexes, come out the other side and be in the leg. And you can actually give people compartment syndrome with this. Um, I was also told by one of my colleagues that if you start to drill and you feel a sharp pinching sensation in your hand, you've just drilled in your hand and you shouldn't do that. <laughs> um, so placement. So proximal humerus, uh, proximal tibia, distal tibia. Now, this is a actual Emory slide here and um, one, of our, one of my colleagues who was not in critical care um, I went to a code, was very excited to use the I.O., but they said, well, we put it in and it didn't work. I'm like, okay. So I looked at the knee and I'm like, well, I can tell you why it didn't work. You know, you had two knees and you chose the one with the total knee. Um, <laughs> we actually got an x-ray to see what the heck was going on. And it wasn't, they actually missed the knee because they went too low. But when we pulled it out, the whole thing was clogged in cement. And you actually can't see, but on the other view, they've gotten cortex and three to the other cortex because they're a little too low. So don't do that. Um, you know, choose the knee that doesn't have the prosthesis. Um, so, you know, this is, a, this is almost kind of a game changer when you're doing codes. And um, a number of, uh, I went to a uh, rapid response um, program about five or six years ago, and it was uh, done by Hopkins. And they basically, they've taken the central lines out of their cart and they just have IOs. And if you put in a non-IO during a code, you basically have to explain why an M&M. And I mean, there's a couple of reasons, you know, patient missing all their limbs or they don't have a good target site, but that's, you know, the other, that's gonna be, you know, few and far between. The other thing I will tell you is that it's probably not the best access for things that need to act relatively quickly. 
Um, I put three in in patients that were awake, two in the same patient, weirdly, um, and it does hurt quite a bit. Um, one we did, the patient was an SVT, had no access, was a renal patient, and I'm like, okay, we'll put an IO in. We give adenosine, and I'm like, hmm, and everybody that knows me knows I'm like not the most patient person in the world, and I'm like, huh, hmm, hmm, hmm. Like, okay, let's pack up and go to the ICU. And all of a sudden, the patient's like, I feel funny. And they're like, they're like, oh, okay, never mind, we're back inside this night, it's fine. But it literally took about a minute for the adenosine to go into the cortex, into the bloodstream, and kind of wander its way through the heart. So, you know, maybe try something a little different there. So it should be the preferred access in a code, it should replace dirty lines, the needle selection and placement is the key, and just remember your contraindications, avoid the knee that's, you know, metal when you try the other knee. So thank you very much.